Hello everybody. We're going to check some gopher traps. I got some Victor traps. Haven't had much luck with. So far it's Gophers 5 Persian Prepper 1. So these traps have a high escape rate. Uh, not too happy with them. Maybe they just some smart gophers. Might check into another trap. This pin here, I got it staked down here. Let's pull this sucker out. Hey, hey, what do you know? I got one. So now it's, it's Pershing 2. Gophers, was it 5? A little 4, whatever I said it was. Here's the trap. I actually got one of these little boogers. Will you look at the claws on him? Man, those things look mean. Look at this. They scratch you up real good. Well, let me show you how I'm doing this. The bubble gum. I'm not quite sure how it worked, well it worked in the other video. I haven't seen anything popped up. Maybe they moved on. Maybe it did did the trick. I don't know. But when you see this, you got a good visual confirmation. Let me show you how I'm setting these traps. I probably should wait and do another hole. Anyway, uh, what you want to do is on the mound. You dig down in the mound until you find that little hole. You need a little bitty garden shovel and you need a little a nice little rod and you're going to poke down until you find that tunnel and you see which way it's going so you're going to take your garden tool and you're going to ream it out and you got to make that hole big enough for that trap to set in okay Make sure I got the right direction going. Yeah, there's a tunnel there. So you can kind of see how far down that thing's going down in there. So we got the direction of the tunnel that way. So I'm going to stop the camera, take him out, re reset the trap, and we'll continue on. Hold on a second. Okay, here's the trap. It's a Victor trap. And it says model... 0610. I couldn't really show you how to set it, being I don't have my tripod with me. So maybe I'll do that in another video. But here's the deal you set that sucker, and you got to have a pretty good hollow space to stick it into. Ream it out real good. And you see, I got this tie wire so they don't drag it down into the hole. It's going to be a stake. I also use that rod as a stake. So just take it, she set, take it, shove it down in there, and go kind of deep, deep with it. So this way, because they'll start kicking dirt at it and stuff. And it seems like the deeper I go, the more success I have with it. And then take your stake, you see the little eyelid I, I twisted around here, stake it here, and there you go. And that'll prevent that little booger from dragging it down into the hole with him. You'd probably never find it unless you do some serious digging. Okay, hey, take care. Thanks a lot. Okay, here's a mound here. You see it's higher on this side than here. So let's figure if I can find the one on this one. And it could be a pain locating that little hole. They, seem, they do a good job of plugging it up. And the fresher the hole, the easier it is to locate. Here we go. See how that went down in there real easy? Yeah, that's it. So I'm going to dig this sucker out. And use the hole. Yeah, see how we're poking down in there? So I need to wallow this out and back it up a little bit. Yeah, looking good there. Oh, see how far my shovel went down in there? We located that little bugger's hole. So that's how you do it. A little garden shovel. You might be able to use a long, really long bladed screwdriver. This is a piece of rebar I had left over when I fortified the footers on the chicken coop. I poured cement there to keep the coyotes from digging out from under here. So here we go. You can see I'm sticking all the way in there. 
I located that little booger's hole. I'm going to ream this out a little bit better. Make sure there's plenty of trap. Room for that trap. So when he comes up on it and springs it, it's going to grab him and not the side of the walls or anything. If I had a tripod, I'd show you how to set the trap, but I don't, so sorry about that. But anyway, I hope this helps. Take care. God bless. Okay, I found a way to hold the camera so we can do this. Here's setting this trap. Again, this is the tie wire I added to the trap to keep the little fella from dragging the trap away. Tighten that a little bit better. Okay, what you do on this Victor trap, you set him straight up, and you push down on this tension bar. That opens these jaws. That grabs a hold of the little fella. Then bring this piece down, the set spring, or you want to call that, that holds the tension. open hold that and here's this little paddle that they push down and release of it so and you see where it grabs it right here and they come along push this paddle bam up it goes anyway again this is the Victor's model not too wild about this trap because these guys have a high escape rate from this trap and one other thing I don't like about it I'm going to see what else is out there. It's not a quick kill. So he grabs a hold of their midsection and holds them down until they die. I'd rather have something along a rat trap where it's an instant kill. Yeah, they're aggravating, but I do believe in a quick kill. So, it works half-ass. Uh, if anybody knows any, anyone better out there on the market, let me know. But I'd really rather have a quick kill trap and one that has a higher success rate and that seems to be bent. Alright, we'll let you go. Take care.